What lies in this travel case is one of the most advanced G-Shock cast ever produced, and that is the GPW-2000. And let me explain why. Before I begin the travel case, I'm sure you guys will ask about this. If you buy this G-Shock watch brand new in 2017 when it first released, you will get this case. But if you buy one today, you'll only be getting the regular Master of G-Box. This watch originally will retails at 110,000 Japanese yen, which is crazy expensive, thus the delay of this video. But thanks to Buy.jp, a proxy shopping service website based in Japan, I was able to buy one of these just around 300 bucks. To be fair, this watch is in used condition and you will see all the used marks after. But considering the price and also all the box and paper, which I also got, I have to say this is a bargain and if you want to stand a chance to be able to get the G-Shock watch at lower price than usual, use the link down in the description box, create an account and you'll receive 1000 yen discount on your first purchase using buy.jp. Okay, what makes this G-Shock watch so expensive yet so good? With that, I'm gonna need a magazine. I cannot explain it just like that. It is so complex. Speaking of which, this magazine will be available for free. You could pick it up from G-Shock official store in Japan, out of the shelf. And this is the GPW magazine or catalog, should I say. And in here is a beautiful image of the black and blue version. The one in my hand right now is the black out model. This one is already dead stock, so I don't think you will be able to buy one brand new anymore, but you could still get this one. They both work the same way and feature the same exact technology. And that is what I'm going to talk about. First and foremost, I have to point out, this is the first ever wristwatch ever produced in the world. That is Bluetooth, Wave Scepter, and GPS Hybrid, all three at the same time, thus making it totally revolutionary. And also the reason why we have all this high-tech GPRB1000 range man, this GWRB1000 Gravity Master, and upcoming G-Squad GBD-H1000, so all thanks to these models. Next, since it has Bluetooth capability, it could update the time on its own, meaning you'll have 100% time accuracy no matter where you are. You could be deep in the jungle, you could be up above the sky, you could be in the middle of the oceans. It will tell you accurate timekeeping, at the same time your exact coordinate as well. Let me stop you guys right there. This watch has Bluetooth, GPS and Web Scepter. Which one will it use for time calibrations? First, it will try to pair with your phone using Bluetooth four times a day between 6 a.m. all the way to 10 p.m. If those aren't successful, and then it will try multiband 6 wave setter method between midnight all the way to 5 a.m. If that aren't successful, and then it will use GPS for time calibrations. And that is something that you cannot do on any other G-Shock even up to this day in analog. Next, this watch also solar powers to cover with all this high consumptions feature but the gps in this watch only use a low energy types and if you look over here it will say the same thing as well low power gps consumptions and i'm sure because it uses small size gps antenna which is located here between one and two o'clock positions that's your gps antenna the wave setter antenna was built somewhere down here in the six o'clock positions and you have your bluetooth antenna that was built, um, let's see now, somewhere around here on 11 or 10 o'clock positions. So those are all the antenna. How about the coil motors to move all of the hands in the watch since it is indeed a full analog model, right? If you look over here, there's double coil motors up on top. I'm sure to move the uh, gears for the uh, coordinations, day display and date display. And you also have gears over here at nine and eight o'clock positions to move the mode indicator or battery level indicator alongside with these dual time subdial hands and more coil motors over here for that as well and two more coil motors at the center to move your hour minutes and seconds so with all of the eight coil technically six bell in here this watch has a size of ta-da and that is incredibly big this watch surprisingly is one of the biggest g-shock watch that you can buy out there and just because of those high-tech constructions. Oh, I'm not done yet. There's more. This watch is, I believe, one of the first, if not the only G-Shock that has two layers of circuit board inside. 
If you look at this image down here, they actually show how it look like and that is just crazy. You'll need two circuit boards just to make sure everything moves, just to make sure everything works in this G-Shock watch. And so far, if you want to pick one, it only have four variants. The beautiful one if from the Gold Tornado Collection, this is the blacked out version. And I'm not surprised why Casio didn't make a bunch of this because they aren't as popular. And mostly because of the functions, it cannot do a lot. So speaking of which, before we get to more details, let's have a quick look on the functions and what it could do with all the gears, with all this GPS antenna and such. What can you get out of this model, okay? First, let me quickly explain what we're looking at here. You'll have your seconds hand, minutes hand, hour hand, date display, day display, sub dial for world time, and they are AM PM indicator. The one on top will be your 24 hour time format. At the same time, AM PM indicator. These hands over here are pointing to your watch battery level, in this case, still high. Pressing this lower right button could check if your watch has successfully received a signal or not, in this case, no. If you want to receive a signal manually, just press and hold and it will try to receive GPS time synchronizations or time informations, or press it again for time and positions. If you choose this, the watch will take time to receive the time and position information, but once you do that, you could check your longitude and also latitude at the same time, so that's pretty cool. Pressing this mode button will bring you back to home time keeping. Press it again will bring you into the mode called the stopwatch. It only has a range to 24 hours, and the sub dial will be your hours and minutes indicator. Pressing this button over here could start it up. Press this upper right button to stop that and press this lower right to reset it back and that is all. You don't have any target time, no split time even. Next, a countdown timer. Press this button again, works the same way, now it moves backwards. So the sub dial will be your hour and minutes all the way to 24 hour range. You can set it up using the crown or using your phone via Bluetooth. Stop and reset, that is all. Next, alarm. Basically, you could only turn it off or on, like so. There you go on or off and you could set the alarm time down here using the crown or using your phone and that's pretty much it now if you want to set the watch or synchronize everything from your phone press this mode button and hold it until the second hand point to C here it is and then the watch will try to connect to your phone and then you could work it up basically like any Bluetooth equipped G-Shock watch we have today that is it if you press this UTC time, the watch will reset the world time down here to UTC time. And then you're going to need to manually plus minus 5 hours, 3 hours, wherever to basically navigate your world time all on your head. But basically you have your universal coordinate standard times in there. So upper right button to turn on the LED light super illuminator, which if you ask anyone at all who own a GPW 2000, they will tell you the same thing. In fact, that it is so bright you can use it as a flashlight. Besides, the luminous also incredibly sensitive to light and it is so good because the size is so big. That's because of the 3D face design. Thanks to that, the construction on the inside is impressive enough. How about the exterior? First, I need to point out it uses carbon fiber second hand to reduce weight, thus minimize the uh, inaccuracy due to impact and g-force and such. Next, the watch band construction, which is the craziest I've seen so far. It didn't use spring bar, it didn't even use screw bar. Just a bar that was clipped on both ends. If you look on this image over here, you can see it. It was uh, guarded with carbon fibers and locked with two screws as well. And this is how it looks like. That is just crazy. And you also have alpha gel, which is sandwiched together down here. Visible, which is great because usually you cannot see this. In this case, you could. And you also have double ring over here for the coordinations and also the date display and that is impressive as well so all of the great stuff that Casio could produce they jam everything in this G-Shock watch and that cost us that amount of price the buttons are easy to use they are big even though they are fully guarded you could easily use them two buck resin over here and two more in metal with brush and gloss finish the back plate has uh, again all the gravity master logo triple G resist and the watch band is full carbon fiber insert like most gravity master premium one at least and that's all the things that makes this gravity master gpw 2000 so good but this watch is still on for everyone since it is very limited function wise i wouldn't recommend you guys to buy one of these if you don't own any g-shock watch since you cannot get a lot of values out of your money 
But if you already have everything, like I did, sure, get this one and you will appreciate the high-tech feature of the watch. And again, I have to point out, thanks to this watch, we now have all those GPS Bluetooth equipment model we have today.